For the second time this year, the number of transactions has dropped month over month, this time by 24%. So do buyers finally get a break on that average price for a home? Welcome back, my name is Andre with The Meadow Group and in today's video, I'm gonna share with you the recent numbers for July that was just released by the Ottawa Real Estate Board and they are pretty interesting. Not only did the number of transactions drop, our inventory slightly increased. But the big question that everyone is wondering, what's up with the average price of a home? And as always, if you have any questions on the current market and would like to schedule a call directly with me, there's a link in the description below and you can pick a date that works best for you. So historically, summer is the slowest time of the year. The market is quiet, buyers are on a break, and sellers are left wondering if they should list their home or not. And the ones that did already list their home are probably in a little bit of a panic. Because you need to remember that sellers are still not used to a market where the home can sit for 30, 40, 60 days before it's sold. And this is probably where historically, it's the smartest time to buy a home and take advantage of the seller's motivation as there could be wiggle room and negotiation on the list price. But, but, but there is also something else that is happening right now that we don't typically see that the buyers need to take into consideration. Here we have the month over month comparison. Um, on the left hand side, we have the different asset classes. So detached home, semi-detached, townhomes and condos. DOM stands for days on market. MOI is months of inventory or supply. And at the very bottom is the number of sales or our tr current transactions. Let's start with transactions. As I mentioned earlier in the video, we saw a drop month over month by 24%. And you can see that over here. So back in June, we had 1,658 transactions. We dipped down to 1,263. That is where the 24% difference is. Now, if you go to May, uh, this is where we had our peak market this year. We are almost at 2,000 transactions. So as you can see from May to July, we had a significant difference in only a couple of months. Now, MOI or our months of inventory or supply is really what dictates any market. Um, back in June last month, we were at 1.8. We slightly increased to 2.5. Now, what you need to understand is that the difference between 1.8 and 2.5 is not a lot. Basically, what this means is if no other home came onto the market today, in exactly two and a half months, there'd be nothing. Uh, all homes would be sold out, nothing on the market but 2.5 is right in the middle of a seller's market. Uh, a reminder, a seller's market is anywhere from zero to four months, a uh, balanced market is four to six months, and six plus months is a buyer's market. So we're kind of right there, just a little bit above um, uh, an average seller's market. Now, DOM, uh, again, a very interesting story. Back in March, 34 days, uh, you know, past that one month mark for a home to sell on average. Now, keep in mind that different pockets in, in Ottawa will be either higher or lower, depending. Uh, April 27, May 23, June it stayed the same, and July increased by a couple of days. So if if you're out there and you're talking to sellers and they wanna know on average how long will it take for my home to sell, you need to be very transparent to them um, as July's average is 26 days. All right, let's look at the asset classes. This is what I found to be super interesting for this month, even though our transactions at the bottom have dropped, and our months of inventory have slightly increased, the average price for a detached home actually went up slightly. So back in June, it was trading for 800,000. It actually went up to 807,000. Now, the reason is, is because we still don't have a lot of inventory. And what happens is when there's not a lot of inventory, all those buyers are left competing for the same home. This is why we see bidding wars. This is why we can see an average price go up. Now, the only asset class that dropped this month was semi-detached homes. They went from 733,000 down to 673,000. Now, one thing you have to keep in mind though, is that this asset class, there aren't a lot of options in the city for it. They do come and go, but as I mentioned before in my previous videos, I think this is one of the smartest asset classes you can get, you can get into, especially if you're shopping in that 600 dollars to $700,000 price range. Because as you can see, townhomes are selling for about 617,000. For a little bit more, you're getting 
uh, more square footage, possibly a, um, a, 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 an extra bedroom, more livable area, a bigger backyard, a bigger lot space, and you're also an end unit because you're only connected to the one wall to the neighbor. So townhomes uh, practically stayed exactly the same as from uh, June to July and condos dipped down just a little bit. So they went from 448 down to 435. Now, I don't consider this much of a difference at all. We're talking about just a little bit. Um, but again, it goes to show you condos, such a strong asset class where it holds its value. If you go back to March, it was at 418, April 435, May 442, June 448, and July 435. Now, remember too, and again, um, I, I talk about this all the time, it, condos are that asset class, which is a starting way to get into the market. It's what the average income producer can afford, around that four to $500,000. So it's a great asset class to get into. It's not your dream home, but it is an asset class where the value will stay and will pick up. And as you pay down that, pay down your mortgage, let's say for five years, you're gonna build a little bit of equity and then be in a position to upsize. So that's kind of where we are. June to July, we did not see that much difference. Yes, the number of transactions were lower, the inventory went up a little bit, the days on market went, but those prices are still competitively the same. Again, because um, not a lot of inventory, because we're in the right smack in the middle of a seller's market, the buyers are competing for what's out there. There you have it. Those were the numbers for July. On the one side, we have less transactions, but that average price hasn't really dipped too much because of our low inventory. Now, do I think that August will be even more less quiet than July? Most likely. But keep in mind that as we head into fall, this is where we see a lot of the buyers come back strong that want to make a move before the new year. So I would expect the busy September to end of November and some fierce competition. If the inventory doesn't increase, we could see a repeat over spring market that we saw this year. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.